Hello guys. So welcome to another tutorial on analysis. In this tutorial we will see how to do analysis on wireframe structures. For that let's first open analysis. Okay. Then as before we drag strat static structural to the workbench. Please note that uh, to have the best benefit of this tutorial uh, you should see my first tutorial on this on ANSYS okay so after dragging it let's rename it to test underscore warf okay now as before uh, we can set engineering data if we want but uh, since uh, it already has a uh, default material uh, I really don't want to do it again so next comes setting the geometry okay unlike the previous tutorial where we drew the geometry in the design modeler uh, we will import the geometry in this tutorial okay now For that, as I said before, one must be careful about these options. Since I am importing a wireframe structure, I must select line and deselect these two. Okay, but uh, let's see what would happen if I select it wrong. Okay, just so that you can troubleshoot later. Let's suppose um, in uh, ZX plane, let's create a line. Okay, first I have to define points, then let's not do it this way. Okay, uh, let's do a sketch on this plane. Okay, so go to sketching line I draw line and I've done let's generate so this is my model one simple model one line okay since it's done let's close design modeler okay but when we go to model see what happens Okay, so as usual, it takes a lot of time. Okay, so attaching a start. And you see, it has just exited. There is a message unable to attach geometry file. Now this is because my geometry has only a single line but that line the model cannot see it so it uh, the model's uh, component thinks that there is no geometry at all so this error comes up now suppose I want to um, refresh everything I want my model to get deleted you see that after I insert the mod model, I can no longer change that to uh, uh, solid surface or uh, curve option. I can no longer change it. For that, I need to delete my model. For that, go to right click, click reset. There will be a message and select OK. So, see, it has gone as it was before. Now, before we do our next, let's uh, deselect this, select this one, then we'll import the geometry. Right click, import geometry on a browse. Now, 
uh, there is one advice I want to give. Um, I'll be uh, importing directly a Katia file. It's because uh, I have Katia loaded and Katia was installed in my PC before ANSYS was. So uh, when I installed ANSYS, uh, there were uh, there were a couple of options which asked me if I wanted to link my Katia files with ANSYS. And I selected yes, and for that reason only, I can directly import Katia files, and ANSYS can decode Katia files to convert the data into uh, their own way. Okay, but if you don't have Katia or any other CAD software installed, it would be best if you use the uh, universal formats of IGS, STP, STL, and such. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see my Katia file. Okay, this is the Katia file. Uh, open. Okay. Now, although it is check marked here, what we see here is that Katia logo. Now, it has a meaning right here. It is that although the mo model is correctly attached, but it is still a Katia format model. But uh, before further analysis, we need to convert it into ANSYS format. Okay. So done. Now see, uh, before import, there is a uh, uh, lightning mark. So we need to generate. And you see, it will be generating the feature. Let's wait for it to complete generating. And uh, if, in, if you have downloaded a Katia file or any other file from the internet, uh, a quick Google search can uh, bring out many online converters which will convert your uh, file to any other uh, formats okay so it's not that difficult to find an IGS or STP file okay so here is the model it is a formula car for a formula student India event that a college participated in and as you see it, it was a first year participation okay so now what we need is that uh, you see this part is the only consists of lines but uh, analysis can't really be done on uh, uh, 1d lines it at least needs a 2d surface or better yet a 3d figure 3d model okay uh, why a wireframe then is useful is because uh, generally all wireframes consist of a continuous member of a single cross section and uh, in this respect importing a wireframe is very useful in ANSYS because I will show you why just go to concept go to cross section and you see there are various cross sections even in user defined way but my car was a circular tube so I will select a circular tube so inside the cross section I can let me change it to millimeter first otherwise it gets confusing with all the decimal places so the inside radius the outside radius the inside radius let it be about um, 7 the outside radius let it be 10 ok so this is my cross section I just have to define this uh, let us say generate now you see that each and every line that the model is made of is splitted and we can access all the splits by selecting shift and click you see I selected all of them right from the tree now what we need to do is see here a cross section option is uh, given I've already defined my cross section as circular tube 1 the only thing I need to do further is write down circular tube 1 
there is done and i need to generate once so now you see one more thing i can't really see my circular tube can i it's th th these are still lines this is because i have to turn on the cross section view manually just go to view then cross section solids you see drawing model and here is the cross section it's fast isn't it i have done it using solid works uh, applying weldments to all the body and it is a very long process a really time consuming and intensive process okay but just for the sake of analysis uh, this is useful because although one can see here for example unlike weldments in solid works you can see that the sides do not merge into each other very well but um, since uh, our application is not uh, graphical but analytical what ansys calculates here is a joint nothing but a joint this um, uh, uh, i mean this graphics which seems very messed up is only an indication to us where the uh, points will join since the, these three lines are joining i'm sorry these four lines are joining at a single point so ansys will treat these four members to be welded at a single point it's as simple as that we don't need to do a thing okay one more thing it may so happen that if you uh, model uh, uh design using catia as i said before in the my uh, first tutorial uh, catia treats the z axis that is up whereas ansys treat y axis that is up so every time i use my isometric view it uh, just gets messed up okay uh, one way we can fix this is orient your model to about the position you want your view to be in for example i want my isometric view to be in this way then right click select set and you see the model is set into isometric even though my model was somewhat like this and these three axes did not make the required angles for isometric but as soon as i Uh, did set they will already align themselves to the nearest isometric view possible and every time i rotate and then use the iso my model will come to the same place so it's very neat got it okay now the final thing that we have to do here is these all bodies are separate entities we need all these entities to get combined into one body you see there are 135 bodies what we need is one single body there so select all using shift then go to create go to boolean tool bodies are selected select apply then unite and generate now you see there is only one body select in this would select the whole body okay uh just as a side note i want to show you what to do if suddenly you think that oh my boolean uh, whatever the I, i did here was my a wrong step and it, i need to retract to my previous step you see only one body is there so i can't get 135 bodies again or uh, directly so what i need to do is just click boolean right click 
and delete as soon as you delete it all the previous entities will be back as it was so I did boolean again unite oh my goodness okay I have to select them all apply let's see 135 bodies there are then generate so it will generate the features once more so it's done now what we need to do is save the project once uh, it will be saved as suppose test to project here and here and my design modeler work is done so I'll go to file close design modeler okay so my geometry is correct now I need to go to my model so double click on model and ANSYS mechanical will start shortly well not really shortly okay and it will start attaching attachment is done I guess yeah so attaching is again done everything is okay yeah now it's done everything now just like design modeler I can also orient it set same way now uh, you can see that you can almost not see the design so what you need to do is go view cross section solids here too and the model will be again feasible okay so the next step is meshing let's go to sizing relevance center medium transition let's keep it at fast and of course okay nothing medium okay so let's update the mesh right now okay the mesh is done I don't need this message and you see a uh, fine enough mesh no need for finer still okay so let's click this again oh. and I just need view okay so now we need uh, some analysis done on this roll cage suppose I want to uh, test a head-on collision so there are a couple of ways one can do it I can uh, think of uh, my car the front of my car to be kept static while the engine section to be coming forward after the crash I can also consider the rear of the end of the car static and the front of the car to be coming inwards during a crash so these two uh, um, views 
are due to the two different frame of references that I'm working on. If I uh, consider the wall with uh, which it will crash as static, then uh, during the crash, uh, the front of the car would always stay at the same place, whereas the rear of the car would come forward. And if I consider my car to be static, whereas the wall comes moving straight at it, so at that time the rear of the car would be static and the front of the car would get crashed. So let's uh, go with the second one. I'll keep the rear end static, the front end, I'll crush it. So to keep the rear end static, what we need to do is right click, insert, fix support, and add supports to the members at the rear end. Now what support, where, where should I add the supports? I'll support, I'll add the supports to edges. So I select edge and you see I can select the edges neatly. Actually these edges are nothing but the lines through which the cross sections are made of. Okay, so the lines are itself selected. So it's quite convenient. So apply, you see there are five edges. So five edges are selected. Now I need the, what I need is a force that is acting I need a force acting at the front of the car at the front for five members so insert force 1 press shift sorry press control and select the five members apply now I can use the vector notation but uh, you see that directly uh, this member is not exactly in the direction of X axis I don't really know if this is uh, I don't really remember that if this is in the X axis completely or not so uh, there is no use taking any risk and uh, let us go for components since it would be faster anyway and uh, let, then you have to calculate the amount of force acting on it. During a crash, let us assume that the car comes from a um, 60 kmph to a stop in 0.1 seconds. 60 kmph to a stop in 0.1 seconds. That would, let's see. So 60 divided by 0.1 or it is 600 kilometer per, oh sorry, it's 60 kmph I said. So it would be 60,000 divided by 3600 which will be divided by 0.1. So it would uh, give us about 166.67 meter per second square and which this is the acceleration which uh, we have to multiply with the total mass of our car. Uh, let us assume our mass to be somewhat near um, 300 kgs. So we will multiply 300 with it and see the force total is coming in at the order of 50,000 newtons. Well, it's 50,000. So, it's just a trial, one shouldn't take the mass of the car just like that, it should be very accurate for crash testing, and 50,000 and enter, it's just a tutorial so I'm not really bothering about the finer details, so now the time has come to solve, let's solve. Okay, okay. So, in my side view, I want to see 
as before how is the deformation so total deformation and I would evaluate evaluation done and deformation let's see okay so the curve would be deforming in this way it's really graphical and as before you see this member has deformed a lot but actually it is showing 20 times the deformation so true scale and this is the deformation we warned before that these are static analysis whereas during a crash uh, the car is not exactly static so static structure analysis on cars for um, crash tests are not very accurate okay since static analysis only simulates a force of 50,000 newtons for this case acting on this which is not equal to a force of 50,000 newtons when acting during an impact okay because during impact the the actual uh, I mean the M okay. oh, sorry I just uh, had a bit of technical difficulties so okay so to continue uh, the force uh, uh, the impact that is failed by a body during crashing is not the same as that failed by the body during um, a static analysis so I will later show you how to do um, dynamic analysis too but in this case let us first stay with static and this is how the static works uh, an auto scale just show that it will deform in this way and that's that so to for uh, to find more results just go to insert and you will see that there are no shear stress shear strain and all those these are probes these are not exactly uh, the uh, you know the, 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 the graphical re representations so gra for graphical representations we need to go to beam results and in beam results we can find the shear force the shear moments and all those so shear force let us calculate but before that I want to I want to also find the torsional moment acting then the um, bending moment and one more important from beam tool okay instead of going instead of right clicking and insert one can do it also from here you see just go to tools beam tool and beam tool we also find the maximum combined stress which is also very useful so evaluate all results so we find that the maximum combined stress is only about 667 megapascal which is acting here as you can imagine that it will not fail just by that Oopsie. okay so this is how one does a static structural analysis on a wireframe member hope you have liked it and if you have got any trouble feel free to comment in my channel and also don't forget to subscribe thank you